man, let me just tell you something. Me and my old lady, we had a gnarly trip over to the coast. We did some toasty waves, and we had ourselves some crab cakes, and it was just a lot of fun, wasn't it? I can't even compete with that. But yes, it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. You go to California, and all of a sudden, it's like going to Canada, and all of a sudden you come home, and you hey, how about that, eh? But go to Canada, and everything's gnarly, man. I mean, that's just the way it is, you know? And I never touched a toasty wave in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, we went there to see our granddaughter, but in the meantime, while we were there, we did a few things. Yes, it was our California holiday, and we're going to show you three little vignettes of fun places that we visited. And, of course, all of them have a little bit of history involved with them. It's us. What do you expect? <laughs> all right, get ready, dudes, because this adventure starts right now. Any trip to California, particularly for landlocked desert dwellers like us, has to begin with the ocean. Well, hello, we are at Point Mugu on the Pacific Ocean. It's been forever since Dale and I were here. I love it here. He loves it here. Our hearts beat faster being at the ocean. Look how beautiful it is. Point Mugu is just south of the Naval Air Station in Ventura County, a small section of the over 340 miles of Pacific coastline that are part of the vast California State Park System. The shoreline here at Point Mugu makes a stunning backdrop for taking pictures. Not to mention our endless fascination with the waves and the seabirds in flight. A few miles south on California Highway 1 at the Ventura LA County 9 is a bona fide Malibu movie star, Neptune's Net. This fun and kitschy seafood restaurant and biker hangout has been featured in countless movies and why not? It's a perfect movie set, no green screen, no props required. There's been a restaurant on this site since 1956. The original, called Jake's Diner, was owned by a NASA aerodynamics engineer, no less, who also happened to make a great burger. The property was sold in the 70s and renamed Neptune's Net. Current owners, the Lees and the Kims, have been serving up legendary clam chowder and fish and chips here since the 1990s. The restaurant side of Neptune's is the original building unchanged for over six decades. Here you'll grab your cold drink from the cooler and step up to the counter to order fried items like fish, shrimp, clams and calamari. The seafood side was added later and offers fresh live seafood. The outdoor patio was also a later addition and incredibly popular on beautiful spring days like this one. All right guys, let me just say, that we were not expecting to come here. Our son and his wife and our granddaughter, they all just drove down Highway 1 and we ended up at this fantastic place. And I'm telling you, the food here was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Plus we got free calamari. I can't even tell you, just just amazing. What, what, what a, a stop that we were not expecting to do. Here we are, we're at Neptune's Net and the cook knows us, invited us to go ahead and vlog the place. This place is legendary. So he just brought us calamari on the house. And what'd you get? I got fish and chips and you got shrimp and chips. It's all fabulous. Big thumbs up Neptune's Net. Neptune's is open every day except Thanksgiving and hosts half a million visitors every single year. While you're here, be sure to check out all the news articles and accolades for this cheap eats favorite. Mm -hmm. 
take home a souvenir menu, or pick up some amazing merch. Next stop, Orange County, the OC, and a wander around Old Town Orange. This is the largest nationally registered historic district in all of California and a popular setting for the Hollywood folks to do location filming. Some of these buildings have been here since the late 19th century. The oldest part of Chapman Avenue is this building circa 1888. Today it's the Earth Cafe, but at the start it was a single-story storefront. The second floor was added in 1912 and was a boarding house. What is now a charming Starbucks was originally home to the Orange Daily News from 1909 to 1967. Blaze Pizza on the corner started life as a general store and in 1908, a pharmacy. Chase Bank now occupies what was once the Opera House and in 1923, the Orange Grove Masonic Lodge. This beautifully preserved section of town came to be in 1908 and housed the local department store back in the day. The building that is now the Antique Station was built in 1949 and was the Alpha Beta Market, a product of the post-war population boom. The Orange County Fruit Exchange was built in 1922 and was the headquarters for the local citrus industry until the late 20th century. <laughs> the Sunkiss Building, you gotta love it! Plaza Park is the heart of the Orange Circle and the city's oldest public space. This elliptical park, situated in a roundabout, was designed in 1886 and has maintained its original design to present day, complete with a thriving orange tree. The Women's Christian Temperance Union held a fundraiser to pay for this three-tiered cast iron fountain in the center of the park and it's been flowing here since March of 1887. Plaza Park is the cultural heart of Orange and has hosted community events and parades since its earliest days. Here on the corner of Glassell Street and Almond Avenue is Kimmy's Coffee Cup, one of five locations across SoCal. Kimmy is a survivor of five open heart surgeries who opened her first restaurant in 2001 and has fulfilled her dream of spreading love and happiness to everyone that enters. We were celebrating our friend Rachel's birthday and had a terrific old-timey breakfast surrounded by these beautiful murals. There are more than a dozen antiques and collectible stores in Old Town Orange. It's truly a mecca for antique shoppers. Right next to Kimmy's is the Antique Station. You've also got the OC Antique Mall, the Antique Depot, and several more on the adjacent streets. As for me, I'm always on the lookout for a good buy on a banjo or a guitar. <laughs> hey folks, we are in Orange County. We're actually at the Orange County Circle. And one of my favorite YouTubers of all times, Justin Scard, his, his uh, uh, name on, on, on YouTube is Random Land, has his own booth. And here we are, checking it out. Let's see what we can get. I mean, this is, look at this. T-shirts. Stuff, the stuff he makes. Look at this. I think he makes these things. Right? I think he does. He does woodworking. Yeah. I think he makes this stuff. But he's got he's got antique stuff, pins, uh, hats, pins, Disney stuff. I mean, this is really cool. Oh, even his his logo, very own logo on his hat. 
So this is a great thing. I'm very happy about this. I really like this a lot. Antique Station, like many antique stores, is set up as a consignment shop with booths stocked by the sellers. <laughs> Let me just say, it was a real thrill to visit his shop and make a purchase. <laughs> We round out our three for tour at yet another historic California destination, Knott's Berry Farm, where we got to experience the Boysenberry Festival just days before it ended this year's run. Hello and welcome to Knott's Berry Farm, Boysenberry Festival. The extravagant displays just inside the entry booths are always decorated for the season and always over the top. This one is celebrating spring with flowers spilling out of vintage barrels and tins and of course supersized boysenberries, the reason for it all. Step in to Ghost Town where the festival is centered. We visited Knott's for the taste of Halloween back in 2020, but at that time there was nothing happening but the food tasting. <laughs> Not so today. Everything is going full blast, and on a Monday afternoon, this place is jammed. Ghost Town is the original part of the amusement park built by Walter Knott in the 1940s and 50s as a tribute to those hardy westbound pioneers. Since its early days, you could pan for gold here at Knott's, and guess what? You still can. The original mine shaft got new life in 1998 when it became the entrance to Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider is the longest, tallest, fastest wooden coaster on the West Coast. The Calico Mine Ride debuted at Knott's in 1960 and still packs them in, meandering through man-made rock formations and steaming pools of water. In fact, if you're more into that slower pace, stop and say hello to the horses in the barn. Or pay your respects to the inhabitants of Boot Hill. We just have to say we love all the Old West touches and signage, much of it very historically accurate. The Bottle House circa 1944 is similar to those in real ghost towns, Calico and Rhyolite. The Mercantile also started life in 1944 and its architecture is typical of what you'd see in the Gold Rush days. No sacks or flour or mining tools in here, though. It's all about logo merchandise and take-home souvenirs. From our research, it appears the first official Boysenberry Festival highlighting that little berry that started it all was in 2014. For anyone who may not know the famous story, Walter Knott was a berry farmer here in Buena Park, and back in the 1930s, he partnered with a fellow from Anaheim, Rudolf Boysen, to cultivate a new berry. The Boysenberry is a cross between raspberries, blackberries, and loganberries, and delicious in a pie. <laughs> Just ask Durango Dale. By the way, if you want to try growing them yourself, you can buy a plant to take home. Or, if you aren't the green thumb type, settle for a limited edition t-shirt. The Boysenberry Festival offers a tasting cart that entitles you to your choice of six samples from a selection of 25 unique and unusual food and drink items, all featuring the Boysenberry. Well, hello. This is our first tasting with our boysenberry tasting card. This is a trio of sausage with peppers. I already tasted it. It's amazing. Big good choice for number one. And I got myself some boysenberry meatballs on mashers, they call it. And I haven't tasted it yet, but it absolutely, it smells fantastic. I can't wait to dig in. I gotta admit, we're like kids in this place. So much to distract our attention. It's a video. The Butterfield Stagecoach has been leaving the depot here since 1949. 
Not only did we catch it leaving, we also saw it cross on a trestle over our heads and from the windows of the train. And speaking of trains, just across the plaza from the stage depot and around the bend from the picnic area, I think I hear the train whistle. In 1951, Knott's began laying track for a circular rail route around Ghost Town. Today, the Ghost Town and Calico Railroad is the last operating narrow gauge railroad in America. The authentic engines were obtained from the Denver and Rio Grande and Rio Grande Southern Railroads. Guests ride in vintage wooden passenger coaches. The scenery is fantastic, and guess what? There might even be a surprise or two while you're on board. And who's got the money? How long have you all been together? Way too long, 41 years. Uh, I'm sorry? 41 oh, years. Oh, no, no, I heard you. 41 years is way too long. You need to move on, change it up a little bit, you know? A huge part of the Boysenberry Festival is the lineup of local crafters who set up shop all throughout Ghost Town. The sheer variety of goods for sale is staggering, from clothing, to ribbons, to food products, to tea, and so many beautiful handmade items. Now let me tell you, these are some very talented folks. During the evening, we had the privilege of walking through part of Ghost Town with Knott's show writer and incurable history buff, Jeff Tucker. Campus Vitus, <laughs> which was a, a I inside know. joke in the Old West, where they would direct people to the e Campus Vitus, which didn't exist. Right. So it was like snipe hunting. Right. And then eventually, Keep going. it did exist. And this is a, a, a tribute to the e Campus Vitus club here. It's very cool. But it's made to look destroyed. It does. Yeah, it's really great. This building was originally the Downey, California post office, moved here by Walter Knott as Ghost Town was coming together. In this window is a peek in at Dr. Walker, the town dentist. And in this one, it's an Old West Thanksgiving. Now, this outhouse looks way too much like the real thing. My family up in Canada used a two-seater like this up until the 1960s, and that's a true story. The Western Trails Museum has a great story. Back in 1936, mining engineer and lifelong collector Marion Spear opened a museum next to his home in Huntington Beach to house what was at the time the largest private collection of Old West and Native American artifacts in existence. Twenty years later, he donated everything, 30,000 carefully catalogued items to Walter Knott, who promised to house it in a museum in Ghost Town. Mr. Spear acted as curator until 1969 when he retired at age 84. The Western Trails Museum is a treasure trove of history. This mother of pearl train was made in 1916 for the president of the Rock Island Railroad to hang in his office. This contraption is a multi-phone, what is considered the first jukebox circa 1907. It played Edison circular recordings chosen by the customer, <laughs> of course, for a price. There's a barbed wire collection, a gun collection, scale models, photos, and cool things you never heard of like cigarette cards. These were included in packages of cigarettes between 1875 and 1940 to stiffen the packaging and encourage collecting of sets. Very, very cool museum and honestly, well worth your time. To wrap up our visit at the Boysenberry Festival, we grabbed a welcome sit-down in the outdoor amphitheater and enjoyed a rousing live music show. They featured a rendition of Leonard Skinner's Freebird squeezed into two and a half minutes. Let me say, these guys were terrific. 
Free Bird in two and a half minutes. If it wasn't for the copyright thing, we would have let you listen to it because those guys were amazing. That was one amazing band. I'm telling you, they were so talented. Not only did they do Free Bird, they did Country Western. They did jokes. They were having a great time. Amazing, amazing uh, trip that we had there to Nuts Berry Farm. It was a great way to end it too, right there in the amphitheater. Yeah. So, uh, what did you think about California? It was kind of, it was kind of gnarly, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> <laughs> we actually laughed after that. I, now I'm embarrassed that I and and if you if I'm saying this, you'll know that I kept it in. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the best part of the California trip, of course, was seeing our granddaughter, but of course, and of course, our, our son and his wife, too, you know. Yeah, them, too. Put them in. <laughs> but uh, uh, the best part was seeing our granddaughter. Uh, she's just amazing, and we had a great time with her. So we spent most of our time with her, but we did manage to stick this stuff in, didn't we? We did, and we have to uh, give a shout out to both our son and daughter-in-law and our friends, the Tuckers, for chauffeuring us around and showing us some of these <laughs> awesome places in SoCal. Yeah, we never would have gone to uh, Neptune's Net. If it wasn't for Scott yeah, and Kristen. And of course, in Knott's, uh, uh, Jeff work, works for Knott's, and uh, we got in Knott's for free. And the Orange Circle was the Tucker's idea as well. So it was, uh, yeah, big shout out to all those guys. And also, I think we're going to go back to Knott's. Uh, we, we've been talking about this for two years, uh, and Jeff is going to give us a complete tour. And I'll tell you what, all I'm going to do is slap a microphone on him and just follow him around and take pictures of what he does, because this man is just full of information. Been there 30 years, so he's going to give us one heck of a tour one of these days soon. All right, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Anything else, Paula? Oh, stay tuned. We have all kinds of exclusive Palms footage for you. We can't wait to share it with you. Don't go far away and make sure those notifications are on. Absolutely. I hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, everyone.